This is just a quick tutorial video on how to make custom flags. So the first thing you're going to want to do is find the structures underscore military config. And uh, this is the files that, they are, that this is under. Once you have found it, you're going to want to go and overwrite this. Now that you have that, you're going to quickly add a new prefab slot. Now that you have that, you're going to go find the flagpoles, and there's two versions. There's the first version, which has the flagpole looking like this. And then, there is a second version, which has the flagpole looking like this. I think, personally, I think a lot of more people would be using the first version, so that's what I'm going to go with. So now, once you have, once you found the flag that you want to duplicate, it doesn't matter which one you duplicate or inherit. So I'm just going to choose the FIA one because it's the first one. So yeah, there's the option to inherit or duplicate. Either one works. However, typically I like to inherit. And um, the reason why is mainly because, I don't know, if there's any changes to the prefab, it will automatically be in my custom prefab. And I usually do this if I'm doing... A, a new prefab that's like very similar to the original so yeah and there we go we're gonna rename it okay and there's the custom flag and you want to go drag and drop that here and now we're good with the config file okay so now you want to go find these two textures this first one right here is going to be mainly used to just get the cloth texture and this one is going to show you how to properly line up your custom flag. So, both of these textures can be found under these files. And then here's the second one. So, first thing you want to do now is uh, I'm going to take this tab out. And then and now we're going to go zoom in to 100%. Now what we're going to do is use the snipping tool right here and we're going to take screenshots of the texture Alright, so now we have this one done, and uh, just in case you didn't know, in order to actually move around here, I am using the uh, holding down right click. Also, another thing to know, the flag textures do not have an alpha map. Okay, as you can see, there is no roughness alpha channel or whatever, so we do not need to take a screenshot of this. Next step, we're going to do the US flag, and like with, like before, it's the exact same process, and there is no roughness map, so I am going to just skip ahead to once this is done. Okay, so now that we have those textures set up, well, screenshotted, we are now going to quickly go into the prefab of the flag itself. We're going to go here to the texture, oh wait, no, no, no not that one actually. We're going to go here to the flag component. And then I'm going to duplicate this one, like before it can be duplicated or inherited, but I don't know, I kind of just like to duplicate the textures. So yeah, I'm going to duplicate that and I'm going to rename this to just underscore test. Alright, now before we continue, I actually have to, I have to quickly explain something about the different textures. So, the flag texture I'm using here is a 1 by 2, so that's the aspect ratio of the flag. However, there's another version as well, which is the uh, 2x3. So with this one, for example, this one, as you can see, has an uh, opacity map in order to get at the proper aspect ratio. However, for the 1x2, there is no opacity map. And uh, the reason why this is done, just uh, in case you want to, like, make the flag a different aspect ratio or whatever. And for example, if your flag is not 2x3 or 1x2, 
then you can pretty much just go ahead and make your own alpha map by just pretty much taking the flag texture and then just drawing well just pretty much just adjusting it to be black and white pretty much like how it is here I'm not gonna show how to do that but it's pretty self-explanatory how you do it if you just look at it but I feel like typically a lot of people would just do a 1x2 flags or it would work out to be in the 2x3 anyway so so yeah but for right now for the tutorial we are gonna stick with the 1x2 All right, now I gotta go quickly find it again. Let's right, so yeah, see. Now we're gonna go drag and drop this here. And there's also another thing I must uh, note about the prefab. There are two ways to get the flag. So the first one, which is the setup that it is by default, is using the flag component, and this is gonna be where the flag will be able to change if you're like capturing a command post or something like that. I'll um maybe I'll show that off once I'm done with it, but pretty much that's what this flag component is for. However, if you don't want that, you could just disable actually no. Um Yeah, you're gonna disable it. And then after that you're gonna go here to the slot manager, and then you're gonna duplicate or inherit this prefab for the actual flag, and then you're gonna just put the new texture on that. And that's pretty much how that's gonna work. With this, when you're using the slot manager one, it will never change, even if it, even if like a command post nearby changes. So that's that's the reason why there's two of them. But I'm gonna stick with the flag component one just to show that. Alrighty, so now that I have my custom one open, we are gonna now create the actual flag texture itself. So. I'm going to go in my software of choice, which is going to be Krita. And now what you want to do is you're going to want to go here and create a base blank template using these width and height dimensions. And um, the reason why I'm doing these dimensions is because that is what the original flag texture is using. These are what the flag textures use for their dimensions. So that's why I'm going to be using that. Alright, so now the next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to take those screenshotted files you got and then drag them here and do open many documents. Alright, now what we're going to do is basically we're going to go crop it out so there's no edges to it, which is just the pure texture itself. Alright, so here's the first piece done. I'm going to go up here and save it. And after that you can just exit out of this. And then you're going to do the exact same thing for the second texture. Alright, now we have the two pieces complete. Now, we're going to put those two base textures onto the blank document, or the blank texture we have here. Also, these two, these are backups of your original, but we don't need those, so we can just delete those. Alright, so here's the first one. We're going to go insert as a new layer. And then the second one, same thing. But for the second one, we're going to move that at the bottom. And now it is properly lined up. Now, for these dimensions, it's really easy because you're only screenshotting two parts. I mean, I guess it kind of depends on the size of your monitor, really. But you typically, for this one, I'm using a 1080p monitor, so I get two pieces. However, if you're using a larger one, you probably could do it in just one screenshot. And now, I'm going to go save this, and we're going to go save it as a PNG. I'm going to be putting the flag texture under the flag base folder that I've created, so I'll just call that flag underscore base, and then make sure to do underscore BCR. Actually, now that I think about it, I don't think for this one you really need to do underscore BCR, but I guess it's a good habit to just do that. 
All right, and now for the US one, you're going to do the exact same thing where you put it here, open many documents, and then you're going to crop it out and then put the pieces together here and then save it out. I'm not going to do that because I already have it, but that's what you would do for the US one. All right, so now that we have these base ones done, let us now actually create the custom flag. So first things first, we're going to go drag and drop the US one. Then after that, drag and drop your custom flag. I'm going to be using the check flag. I don't know. I, I don't know why. I'm just going to be using that because uh, I don't know Bohemia's check, so that's why I'm using it. So yeah, now we drag it in here. Now what you want to do is hold shift and then while holding shift go through the corner and then just adjust it like that. And then you want to line up the corners properly. Uh, now as you can see the flag is actually smaller than the US one so yeah I can't okay you know what here's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna just extend the flag all right so this one I feel like could work for the uh, 2 by 3 so this is what I was saying before you know this is why this is there's another option because some flags are not the same aspect ratio so yeah, I guess also this could be a way to show how to make a flag longer so what you would do I just I copy paste it and I just extend the part here no, actually I'm gonna go put that under and then I'm going to copy paste it again. And there we go. That is the extended check flag right there. And after that we're going to merge them. Alright, so now actually I forgot to mention, before we continue with the actual flag, I forgot to do one thing with the base flag, so... We're going to go here, open that as a new document, and now we're going to isolate the cloth part of the flag, because we don't actually need the rest of it. So yeah, we're going to go here. Alright, now that we have that, we're going to do Control c and then Control v and then we're going to delete the background, and there we go. Oh, wait, um, I accidentally left a bit of it still here. Uh, for this, I'm just going to I'm just gonna erase it. So I'm going to go here, go to the Erase tool, and just erase that little bit right there. All right, now it's good. So now I'm going to go save that out I'm just not gonna do this on this group BCR alright now we have that done alright so now we can get back to the actual flag so now you take your base flag you're gonna insert that here and then you're gonna go on to go here change that to overlay and now you wanna adjust the actual uh, brightness and saturation of the flag you're gonna go here adjust it and typically a standardized values that I use is I do negative 40 negative 50 as you can see the flag looks pretty good now now for these values you don't have to use these values like you, if you think the flag is a bit too desaturated or a bit too dark you can increase them but I feel like these are some good standard values for just for the tutorial I mean at least and there we go the actual flag texture is now complete so now we're going to go save that out. I'm just going to do, there we go. I'm going to keep it underscore 1x2 because this is the 1x2 version of the flag. We're going to keep the BCR because this is a good naming convention, even though it doesn't actually use BCR, like a, a reference texture. Still good to do that because it makes sure that your image is not going to be dull, as it's not going to be under the linear color space, it's going to be on the sRGB. I don't know if a lot of you know what I'm even talking about, but basically it's, this is going to help it not be dull when you import it. So we're going to save that. I'm going to go back to the tools. Now that we have the actual material open, I'm going to go back and drag and drop our flag. 
And then replace that flag, and there we go. Looks pretty good. And now, if we go back to the prefab, it messed up for some reason. Alright, so I just figured out what went wrong with the flag. Um, I didn't realize this until now, but a lot of the, some of the textures don't actually have the same thing, like the uh, same properties, so I should have duplicated the US one just so the example would have worked out at the beginning. However, right, well, there's an easy fix for that. If I go to the US one, as you can see, it uses the uh, global map UV transformation, so we're going to go apply that. And then just copy this value. Now it should be good. There we go. Now the flag is working properly. Alrighty. So now, that is pretty much how you create the flag, but I'm going to go in the game and show it off quickly. Alright, so now I am in Game Master and I'm going to go show off the flag quickly. I just realized in the actual prefab of the flag, we didn't change any of these settings, so it's still going to be called FIA flag, but here you can see it has the little modded icon here, so that knows that's the custom one. However, you can easily like change the factions, the faction stuff, the preview image, the name, all that stuff. I just realized maybe I should show that off before I end the video, just in case you don't know how to do that. But, here it is, here's the flag. And the thing I was talking about earlier, with the command post, as you can see, if I place one down, it is going to change to whatever the faction's flag is over there. So if you don't want to do that, you don't use the flag component, you just do the slot component. So that's how you do that. However, just before I wrap up the video, I'm just going to quickly show off how to change the faction and the the name and all that stuff so I'm gonna go here gonna go to this component right here and then for name right here this is a localized text I have a video explaining localized text but if you don't want it and you just want to type in the name you can just do like flag underscore well flag hyphen check then after that there's a preview image I also have another video about preview images, so you can go watch that one. The faction, if you don't want it under the faction, you can do that. Same thing with here, you can just not have it as under the faction, you just do none. And if you want it under the modded label, you can just do this. There we go. And now, if we go back in the game, you know what? Actually, hold on. Before I quickly do that, I will sh show off the other method just to show off how it does work. Alright, so now it is going to be using the uh, slot component and not the flag component. So yeah, if we go back in the game, well, I'm going to go show it off how, how it works. Alright, so I'm back in the game master now, and now, if I go search up FIA again, as you can see it's not here. And it's not even under the FIA faction at all either, if you look here. And it's now under the modded label, and there it is. See, it has the name. Oh, I just realized I, I misspelled it. I misspelled check. Uh, my bad. Well, I guess it doesn't really matter. This is this is a test flag. All right, and then here we go. Here's the flag. As you can see now, it doesn't change. So that's the difference between these two components. And that's pretty much the end of the video, so hopefully this video helped you in teaching you how to create a custom flag.